smoother this time going into the flow going in getting into the flow here all right greetings greetings so got a little streaming issue here on the YouTube is sub telling me but anyway let's um, let's get started here let's start it with a, uh, a a brief meditation period start off with a meditation period um, I have this in the way here let me okay a brief meditation period let's relax Get organized. So we're gonna come on every Saturday at one. So I want you to get together, get organized. Like I said, just like your your uh, your soap operas you look at every day at a certain time. You make sure you don't miss those soap operas. So we want to make sure that we're on point here. We sit down, we grow together. This is a great program, and I guess just want you guys uh, to to if you spend some time with it, then you will understand what I'm saying. You will understand what I'm saying. All right. Let's uh, let's have a meditation period. Let's calm down. Let's bring it down, bring it down and relax. Take some deep inhaling breaths. Relax, just relax. Just relax and open up our minds to be receptive to new information. This is Reparation Saturday School. You know, people getting excited about getting ready to receive all this money, but we want to make sure that we're prepared to do so. So we take advantage of this great opportunity in history here that we don't want to court. And the way that we're going to get the best bang for the buck is to make sure that we don't want to court. So there's no, no gaps. See, we have, to, we have to do something that we haven't done before. In order for the reparation to work, we have to come together in a spirit, spirit of unity. And when we come together, we want everybody to be on the same page. We want everybody to be on the same page. We want to... You know, we know everybody's at a different level of their development, but the program is designed to level the playing field. We want each, we want to be equally yoked in our relationships. We want to heal the gaps between our, 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 our women and our men. You know, sometimes there's some hateration there between the ones that have been going to college and the ones that didn't go to college. You know, so we want to we want to do some healing and we want to level the playing field, right? So let's start with it. Let's start off with an opening prayer this time. Right. In the name of the great I am, bless us as we say this prayer in unity. Open supernatural doors in our lives today. Save and set free. Give us a mighty portion of your spirit right now, which has already been done when you breathe life into us. And by every breath we take, there is power. As we take back everything the wicked ones have stolen, bless our emotional health, physical health, finances, relationships, children, jobs, homes, and marriages. Cancel every plot, plan, and scheme our enemies have devised and continues to devise against us in the name of the great I am. And I declare in your greatness no weapon formed against us will prosper. I speak life into every dead situation. And in the name of the great I am, I thank you that nothing is over until you say it's over. I speak prophetically into our lives and into our situations right now. May our households be blessed, our health blessed, our marriages blessed, our finances blessed, our businesses blessed, our jobs blessed, our children blessed, our grandchildren blessed, our parents blessed, our siblings blessed, our talents blessed, and our decisions be blessed. Husbands, wives, and partnerships are on the way that are focused, disciplined, and determined, whom are also equally prepared and anointed for the task ahead. And our decisions be blessed. Mortgages and debts paid and canceled in our lives, including those student loans that we can take care of through this program. In the name of the great I am, we beseech you. Amen. Claim it, 
believe it, and receive it. Amen. Amen. All right, so today, Reparation Saturday School. Let's, uh, let's start off with, you know, I always have volumes of these pages and so forth, that, uh, thoughts. So let's, let's today, let's, let's, uh, let me ask you a question. What is courage? Because it's going to take courage for us to embark on this journey. It's going to take courage. So what is courage? The opportunity to recognize your own weakness and the strength to do something about it. That's a lot. That's a lot right there. The opportunity to recognize our own weakness. Sometimes when people tell us things, we, we get offended. Right, we get we we we're overly emotional instead of and maybe the delivery wasn't great, but sometimes we have to listen to what's being said. We have to we have to put aside the the emotional aspect so we can receive the information. And I'm just telling you from my own experience and so forth. Sometimes people don't and every year, you know, it become every year I go over my goals and and, 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 and get refocused. You know, and every day I have my, my goals set up, my milestones, uh, and I make sure that I work towards that. I got my th things to do list and so forth. And that's how I accomplish the things, you know, that I wanted to do. You got to have some structure. You got to have some discipline. And that's what the orientation program that I've set up is designed to do, to, to take the time. Because some of us aren't ready right now. Sometimes it might take a month or a couple months in order to get things in order. You know, it took me years. I... When I wanted to go to law school, it took me years to to get my ducks in a row. So I finally made that commitment, right? So, and also, you know, courage. That's that's important. That's important because they got us. You know, they, they they you know, with all this stuff, the, the shootings and the the violence against us, they they got us in a, a, a state of mind uh, that sometimes we can't think we're in a state of insanity, and especially. That coupled with ha coupled with having to work paycheck to paycheck, that that puts us into a state of insanity, and that creates a lot of us from being able to not being able to slow down and to listen to something that's going to help us to get out of that 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 mode, that rat race. And I there's a uh, before I get started, there's a reparation Saturday school I did that's introduction zero zero, and I'll be loading that up on YouTube and Facebook uh, probably by the end of the day when I send it out, and you need to look at that one. And they go, they go together. We plan on doing this throughout for the re remaining part of the year. Right? Okay. So now I also put together a, um, a survey that, was, uh, that I created to do this. So it should be, hopefully it should be up as well. All right. And there's another question I want to ask. What is the difference between being smart and having wisdom? I think I raised that question before. What is the difference between being smart and having wisdom? So you can put it, I don't know if the chat room is active or not, but you can put that up in there. You know, what is the difference between being smart and having wisdom? The difference between being smart and having wisdom. Are they, are they, can you see that? All right, let me, let me just tell you, let me just tell you. Smart is the, your ability to learn from your own experience, right? And that takes, that takes some time, that takes some time. And having wisdom is learning, being able to learn from others, learn from others, from your elders, those who've done it before. But this, this program right here, you know, will show that you have wisdom because this information has never been presented to us before. A lot of people I've talked to, they well, I already, I already know that. No, you don't know that. Nobody's put it together like I'm putting it together right now. I'm creating a whole perspective on the journey, a journey that dollar makes in the creation, accumulation, and preservation of wealth. It's the journey, not just one event. Most people tell you, okay, Invest in some Bitcoin, some speculative tub, or this investment or that investment. This is beyond that. Because everybody needs to know how to make money. Right? It's what you do with the money once you get it. We have a tendency of spending, overspending, 
everything that we get. We, we mimic our, our, our government. The government has become our mom and dad, and we, we and, and the country reflects the type of behavior that the government does. The government is bankrupt, right? And if we act like the government, then we're going to be bankrupt as well. You can't, you have to live within your means. See, you have to live within your means. You can't mismanage your finances. And that's what this reparations uh, discussion is all about. How do we make the best use of this blessing that's about to come our way? Actually, the blessings have already been flowing. Because we spend, I'll tell you, over and over $1.3 trillion a year outside of our communities. We're not being good stewards of what God has blessed us with. So we're here to address that issue right now. But it takes time. But I've put it into a, a crash course. I've taken 40 years of, of finance and life experience and compressed it into an 18-month course. And you don't want to, and it's a lifelong process, but at least we're going to get started in the right direction. We're going to get started in the right direction versus being smart. You know what I'm saying? It, being smart, it took me, you know, my life to figure out what was, you know, what's going on. And had I, if I had this information from the very beginning, what a difference it would have made. It would make a difference in your life. So we want to make sure that our children, starting, just put it into the household. But no later than age 12, 13, we have a rite of passage program that, that I'll uh, briefly uh, hit on uh, today. Right? So what is courage and what is the difference between being smart and having wisdom? And also make sure you look at the introduction uh, to reparations course that, uh, that I'll be posting later. And I have lots of YouTube videos, podcasts. Uh, they show up on YouTube right now. Uh, the websites are valuable information. It's an indoctrination process. It's an indoctrination process that will allow uh, you to be get acclimated. Acclimated. Because this is some new information. So don't be afraid to learn something new. And the whole objective is to, to, to deal with our spirituality which is overcoming our lower beastly nature to become more spiritual. That's what the Sphinx in Egypt, with the body of the lion and the head of a man, represents. Overcoming our lower beastly nature so we can become more spiritual. That's our destiny, see, as we grow into wisdom, as we grow into our adult spiritualhood. It's a process. But you need to know that the beginning, the des the beginning of the journey so you know your destination. So we're plotting it out here. Right? I'll give you the beginning and the end. So now you can you know the road, the true course of rectitude that you're supposed to stay on. So you're not getting lost in the wilderness. Right? Okay. So welcome to Reparation Saturday School. We're dealing with the honor and obligations that we owe each other as an African people. So we have to get back to, to the basics. Get back to the basics. So today we're talking about, you know, the whole economics and morality. You know, they, they fit close close together. So in order to have our economics right, we want to have our morality right. None of that fake it till you make it stuff, because that's you'll never make it. You end up locked up somewhere. See. And you're doing stuff and you're conducting your affairs for something that you don't know how to do. We wanna we wanna raise the the, the, the level of professionalism. We're down here, but we think we up here. Right? We want to be able to build schools for our children. We want to be able to finance. We have some brilliant scientists out there that one sister I looked at, she, she was on the crust of, of on cancer research and so forth. We want to be able to finance that kind of stuff. We want to have our own research lab. So they come out with, with the, uh, the, v, the V word, and then we want to be able to, to test that. We want to make sure that it's good for us. We want to make sure that our nutrition is designed for us, the medicine it's designed for us. We need more doctors. We need more dentists. We need we need urban planners. All the professionals we need in our community. We shouldn't have to go to someone else to take care of our needs. That doesn't make sense. They had a whole generation of people that came over here. Now they're they're filling the hospitals. They're they're all they're all over the place. We're nowhere around. We're not taking this serious. We're everybody's serving us, but we're not serving ourselves. 
And then when we do get in that position, we need to show some respect and reverence towards those who put in that work and that effort. So we got we have to really we got to start from the, the very bottom and we're going to build ourselves up. But we need to do it in a very quick period of time. Right? We need to do it in a very quick period of time and it could be fun. You know how we do it? Let's come together, let's have some fun together. Let's grow together, let's learn together. Right? So, and uh like I said, it's good to see reparations, the, the introduction, I put that together uh, actually last night, and uh, it's very, uh, and, and instead of, it was uh, it's part of this presentation, but in order not to make it so long, I went ahead and did that beforehand. So you need to look, it's very, it's, it's, you're going to like it, but it lays a foundation for what we need to do, and every every presentation is designed to do that, right? Okay, so reparations, the problem, or the opportunity. I don't really like to use the word problem, it's, the, it's opportunity. Every problem is an opportunity. But the thing is, is that we, we're confusing the problem with the symptoms of the problem. The symptoms are crime, crime drug ab abuse, broken homes, kids in foster care, poverty, homelessness, gentrification. Those are symptoms of the problem. The real problem is that we lack economic unity. And, and when you don't have economic unity, then all these symptoms seem like problems. When, and you can't address them individually because it's like putting a Band-Aid on a gaping wound. So we have to address the rear, the root cause of the problem. See, now reparations seems to be a, 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 a solution to the problem. But the problem is, even though it will be helpful, but like I said, we need to bake our own cake. And the reparation is going to be the icing on the cake, right? And you can't eat the icing by itself because if it, you just eat the icing by itself, then you get sick. And it really doesn't have any nutri nutritional value just for sweetness, sweetener for a short for a period of time. So you want to be able to bake your own cake. And then the reparation will be icing on the cake. So the problem is that we need to we need to to to, to fix ourselves. We need to work on ourselves. And and having a lot of money, you might be a person, I got it going on, I don't need nothing. That's that's a problem. Because when a person has money, Things going well, you think everything is cool. But you don't think about preparing yourself for for a time when you don't have that money. I've talked to so many people, well, I used to have this, I used to have that. Or they engage in buying too much stuff, over-consuming. And then at the end of the day, they, they're trying to sell stuff. See, none of this stuff we own. That's the problem. We need to own our own. See, somebody's giving that to us. A job is doesn't belong to you. Somebody's giving that to you. So if you on top of the world and you're working for somebody else and somebody's giving you a job and so forth, that could be what what happens when you don't have that anymore? What happens when that's taken away? So we have to think down the road. I mean the government is cool, you know, it's a, you know, this our government speaks out of both sides of its mouth. One part's good, other part's bad. Right? Smacking you around, keeping you unstable. So you can be dependent and not be able to think. And that's what the school system is, is, is done, is not allow us to think critically. Because this situation that we're in is so easy to overcome, individually and collectively. It's so easy to overcome. But if you're not able to think right and be able to come together, you think you all that, right? We got a problem. So we have to put that nonsense aside and we have to come together in the spirit of unity. And we learn the same thing. And we would need to be equally yoked. So I know about economics, I know about finance, I know about budgeting because my house is in order. We can't do nothing unless we get our house and your individual house has to be in order. Just like back in the day, people want to start an investment club and then 
uh, they put their money into a into a fund, and uh, a couple couple months later, one of the investors said, "Man, I need my money back." What is that? That's why they said investments. You invest in investments, you can't get that money back for a period of time. It's locked in, right? But we want our money back right away. Or we or we start an investment. Back in the day, they started. They had the mutual funds. I guess they call them index funds now. The mutual funds, where you already have a layer of administration on that, and now you want to start an investment group and you invest in mutual funds. That don't make no sense, right? Now you got two layers of administrative costs, one that's built into the into the uh, to the fund, and then now your group has an administrative cost. You ain't gonna make no profit. So when we come together economically to invest, it's to buy ownership interest. That's what capital, they buying up. That's why we, we're in a situation the rich keep getting richer because they buy up everything. They buying up all the companies. So it's only a, the, the, in the hands of a few. So that may not be the path that we want to take because we don't want to be like BET, right? At the end of the day, when it becomes a, a staple of our culture, then you sell it, sell it away. We, we got to stop the nonsense. Stop the nonsense. Right? But it's a gradual process. It's a gradual process. And the course is designed to teach you why a job is an asset. To use it to invest in your future self. So just having having a job, oh, I hate this job. You know, you have to understand what it's for. How it fits into your portfolio. See, there's two types of diversification that you need. There's your investment portfolio that must be diversified, and we go into detail on how to create a diversified portfolio and how each of those instruments operate within your portfolio. Then the other portfolio, which no one talks about, is your skill-based diversification. You have to have skills. You need to be diversified so that way you're able to react to different changing economic climates, right? So you become a, a chameleon, if you will but one that has skills. And this program right here lays that foundation, right? It lays that foundation. So it diversifies your talent base, your skill base. So you, this is not a one pony show. Like if I lose my job, I'm, all I can do is go look for another job. Instead of having both engines, it's like an airplane with only one engine operating and the other one, you know, is, is you, so you, flying crooked <laughs> and if that other engine runs out you gonna crash and burn versus having two engines operating at the same time makes sense makes sense all right so this is and the thing about the internet is that it's personable to you it's personal to you i'm talking to you i'm there with you we working together in the privacy of your own home and your your comfort zone this is between me and you that's the beauty about it. Nobody has to know that you're coming up, right? Your family, the the, the uh, wealth building workshop. Get your family together. Let's work together. The opportunity to check your kids, make sure they're on the same page, make sure they're functioning properly. You know what I'm saying? They, they ain't got no problems at, at school that you don't know about. You're able to let them know how important it is to develop your mind so you can compete in society. And that's what the program is designed to do. I don't want to have to spend 10 years con convincing you to do something that you need to do right now. 10 years, your kid's going to be growing and out. You want them to get this information right now. All right. When it comes to reparations, so what is reparations? A lot of this I cover in the, the first series, so you need to check that out. It says, they, you know, they're talking about reparations. I have a, did a, a piece on Larry Elders there, you know, this guy. If you don't know, I, I covered uh, him. And we have black people in our community that, that go in the other direction. They're, they're traitors, if you will, because we're not, we not doing nothing. There's no threat to them because we're not organized. We're not organized. So they can be traitors. They can go because they're getting fed there. That's who's feeding them. We're not feeding them. That's why the athletes don't bring their money into the community because we're not feeding them. We, we not, all we're doing is, is talking. We're not doing. We have faith without works. 
And we learn that from childhood and the, tur the churches and all that kind of stuff. We just talkers, talkers. See, we have to become about action. We have to develop an action plan for our life. Not that things don't change and evolve. Now, there's some, some, some teaching and so forth. Back in the day and, and recently, you know, when our, our young people are, are young and in third grade, fourth grade, you ask them what they want to do. They have such great ambitions for their life. And when they go through the process and they get into that, that, that fifth grade, sixth grade, they can start getting beat down. Beat down. Oh, I want to be a doctor of science. Oh, no, you need to, you need to dig holes. That's not a good. That's not a good profession for you. You need to do this or do that. You know, let nobody di direct you what your passion is. That's your. If you have a passion, that's your purpose. That you can help someone else. And it's always good to work in an area that you have passion about. Then it's not a. It, it's, it's not a grind. We talk about reparations. What is reparations? The, that 80% of black Americans are for reparations and 80% of white Americans are against reparations. And I also, and I talk about that briefly. I'm like, wait a minute. That's a non-starter because nobody, when the government decides to get for reparations, they don't, they don't open it up to, for the public debate. So having the public debate whether black folks are entitled to reparations, that's a non-starter. They didn't ask you if you wanted to be enslaved. They didn't ask for slavery. When they, when they gave Europe uh, uh, the, the Marshall Plan, they didn't ask people to vote on that. They just did it. When they gave other people reparations, they didn't ask nobody to do it. You just got to do what's right. Nobody was, was, was asked to, 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 to make us to, 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 to write into law that all people uh, of, of, of color are slaves in the United States. They didn't ask nobody to do that. So talking about having an open debate of 80%, that's, throw that out the window. That's garbage. That's garbage. And, and, and what makes it, see, they've been having this discussion a long time. I think it's just a, a political ploy right now because Biden wants to get reelected again. And these people are tricky. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're always coming up with some kind of tricks to, to distract you. So, the, so the, is, the issue is, just like in law, if I have a case, if, I'm not, if I don't have the proper facts and the proper analysis, they're not going to want to, Settle the case, and I don't have any bargaining power. So we don't have bargaining power. Just because you're out there marching and all that kind of stuff and the heat coming up, even with the civil rights legislation, you know, you can't, you, you, you can't write on paper and make somebody behave like they're supposed to because it just rears his ugly head again, puts you to sleep. See, and our generations were put to sleep when during the period of time of civil rights, we were activists. We were like on the move. Then all of a sudden, they banging on us, banging on us, and put us to sleep, put our minds to sleep. They say, okay, give you a job. You know, you can buy a house. You got a two-car garage. Then all of a sudden, your kids are, are no good because you didn't make them do no work. Oh, I don't want them to have to work like I did. And what's wrong with that? That's what bade you. See, we spoil. You have to do things. Don't forget the basics. All this technology that we have, we can't forget the basics. You can't forget the basics. When I go to my kids' house, they got the wash, they got the the uh, the, the the dishwashers and all that kind of. I'm like, listen, you better teach your kids how to wash dishes. You know, we always got one lady. She had a garbage can. You go by and talk to the garbage can. All of a sudden, it opens up and stuff, so you can put the trash in. I'm like, man, you can't even take, the, it's not taking the trash out yet, it's just, but you, that thing costs so much money. Now they're putting the technology in, so you can, uh, 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 everything's technologi technologically driven now. You got to learn the basics. Don't, don't forget the basics. You know, we don't even grow our own food no more. We got, we got land out there, black farmers that need a market for their produce. There's a lot of things that we can do. It's a lot of things that we can do together. We've got churches on every corner, but we don't have any schools. Okay, let's talk about reparations. From 1945 to 2018, the German government paid approximately $86.8 billion in restitution and compensation to Holocaust victims and their heirs. 
Germany has also identified Nazi looted objects, including artworks, books, and objects within larger collections, and has returned 16,000 objects to survivors and their heirs over the past 20 years. Thousand more pieces of looted art are still missing worldwide. Rising anti-Semitism throughout Europe, including in Germany, and especially in former East Germany, coupled with polls showing the need to increase Holocaust education among Germany's youth, highlight the importance of Germany's continued dedication to fostering a culture of remembrance. Jewish organizations have also organized to hunt down Nazi participants of the Holocaust. That's organization, man. I have another p uh, piece that I did, um, you know, a message, and, and on the, my podcast, I had it on the Consolidated Realtors, and I sent a message to them to try to how they could vamp up their organization, but it appears to have fallen on deaf ears. See, where we can't be, we got to stop being lazy, man. Everybody got their special. You got real estate, you know, you got contractors, you know, uh, you have everybody, you got nurses, doctors, all these areas and stuff. We can concentrate in and support it so that we can grow. This crop, this stop being the long soldier, the long, you know, what happened to, to, to General Custer? You know what I'm saying? You go in there and you look back, well, your soldiers, man, you ain't got no soldiers behind you. Because they've been wiped out. Now you're going to get massacred. Reparations have been paid to Japanese Americans for the internment camps when the American government gathered up all Asian Americans and imprisoned them in internment camps during World War II. On separate occasions, 40 years apart, Congress awarded payments to Japanese Americans who were taken from their homes during World War II and sent to internment camps. So it looks like they had reparations twice, right? The Japanese American Evacuation Claims Act of 1948 offered compensation for real and personal property they had lost. About 37 million was paid to 26,000 claimants, but no provision was made for lost freedom or violated rights. But nobody's really oppressing them. They may have some some issues going on right now, but the reason that they have climbed so far in society is because they had a helping hand and the government wasn't oppressing them. See, and, and the, what the, the story I was telling before about negotiation, you have to have the power to negotiate. And what we're doing is, is strengthening our hand. See, because I think this is a ploy as far as reparations go, but unless you got the mindset to manage that money, it's like winning the lottery. What happens to the lottery owners, most of them? They, they spend it. Or well, somebody jack them for it. See? Or you end up living a harmful, wasteful life. Like many of our athletes at the end of the day. They get those salaries that they get right out the gate are more than people make during their lifetimes. But what happens? They get into a relationship, and all of a sudden, they, they, their, their significant or other wants them to have these big, lavish houses and, and all that kind of stuff. And all of a sudden, they get injured, and then all of a sudden, it's a, a cesspool. It's falling apart. The pools and stuff. I, you know, I've I seen it happen. So if you're, if you're an athlete, and you get a, all of a sudden, you got a, a $100 million uh, contract... You know, the, you know, all of us, you know, probably uh, tied to to performance or whatever. But you get that money. Make sure your foundation is solid. Make sure you got a house that's paid for. Make sure everything is laid. They got you a trust set up for your kids. Make sure you got a solid foundation. You know, before you go doing foolish stuff, buying all these cars and all that. You can only drive one at a time. So every, you have to diversify your portfolio so if your career is suddenly over or you engage in inappropriate behavior, you still have a, you still got somewhere to go. You ain't got to go back to the grocery store and bag, bag groceries because you're destitute. And letting somebody else manage your money, and at the end of the day, they, they wealthy, but you broke because you don't know this material. And the same thing with these reparations right now. First of all, we have to be in, have a good bargaining position it comes into same thing with these these vote with voting we've been voting for these democrats and, and behind the scenes they're doing damage to us they're doing damage to us and we're not 
we, we have no negotiating power. If anything that we learned from, from President Donald Trump is that quid pro quo. You can't get something for nothing. But we keep giving away everything and not getting nothing back. So what? He appointed a black lady to the Supreme Court. Right? He appointed Clarence Thomas to the Supreme Court. What do we get out of that? But we have to do our part. We can't send one and two out there. That's like sending a leader with no army behind him. We have to do our part. Well, Marcus Garvey said, hey, if I had to do it over again, the biggest mistake that I made was not educating the, our people so they can participate in their own liberation. That leader stuff. Be your own leader. Be your own leader. And in the, the first video I show you about that, you know, be the CEO of your own, you know, house, of your own person. Be the captain of your ship, man. So you don't be running into rocks all the time, crashing up your vehicle. Okay, that came in 1988 when Congress voted to extend an apology and pay 20000 to East Japanese American survivor of the internment. More than $1.6 billion was paid to 82000 219 eligible claimants. So they paid twice and they paid a lot more people the second time than the first time. The difference is 400 years compared to a, four year, four, a few years of oppression, oppressing the entire group of people based upon race. Blacks in large are never allowed or prepared to assimilate because white middle class America doesn't want black America to compete with and marry their children. That's my part, you know. I, was, I remember America when it comes to blacks has been a system of apartheid compared to, comparable to South Africa, but more insidious and continuous today. And a lot of you don't even know you, at that age, you don't even know about apartheid South Africa. I remember when I was at UCLA, we used to march and we used to uh, boycott these banks and so forth who did business in South Africa. And to put the pressure on them, which eventually caused the collapse of that, that uh, racist regime. See? But now we have we have a company we have like uh, in in Israel you got the Palestinians man treating them bad and what I can't understand you got people coming here to this country being racist now we got a lot of Hispanics a lot of them good people it's a lot of them are being racist now you come from a country that oppresses you and you have the audacity to come and do the same thing to other people that you complain about being done to you. That don't make no sense. That doesn't make any sense at all. That's a problem with that. But then again, just like a bully, if, you, if you're weak, if you show weakness, they're going to keep punching you in the nose. But if you stand up for yourself, you know what I'm saying, even though that bully might beat you down, you pop that bully in the nose one day and, and show them that you're willing to stand up for yourself, then the bully ain't going to bother you no more. And you got to do more than march. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, that only does it for a short period of time, and then a generation later, even less, it rears its ugly head. And with the George George Floyd incident right now, they still shooting down black people. But we want to we want to remove ourselves from that situation. See, we want to address. You know, they have you know groups that deal with that, the fringes and stuff. But we want to deal with the, the 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 cake of the matter. We don't, we don't want to put ourselves in an in a economic situation where we have to run from the police. See? Where we have crime on crime, black crime within our community, shooting each other. We kill more, we kill each other more than the police does. I'm not, you know, that issue will be dried up. That's a symptom of a bigger problem. And that's why I started this presentation off is, is that the honor and obligations in our African American society, our community. What do we owe, what honor and obligations do we owe to each other? We should not be taking each other's lives. But we have to heal ourselves and our communities so we don't have to run outside try to oh I'm trying to get out the hood. No, let's make the hood a place where we can we can do our thing. Let's stop the nonsense. That's foolishness. I'm trying to get paid so I can get up and leave the hood. Or destroy another family so you can come up. 
or raising stick up kids because you didn't do well in school. You don't expect your kids to do well in school. So you teach them to be stick up kids and take from others because you failed to do for yourself so you can feed yourself. I know everybody's not like that. But we're looking for the cream of the crop right now. Those who get it. And they got nothing to do with how much money you got if your mind is right. So we can come together. And the first ones comes, you know, I'm telling you, you not only the, the whole objective is to educate you, right? And then we're going to put some money in your pocket. So now you educated about finance, economics, about life, about your spirituality. Now you have economic resources. So now you can go out and pull somebody else up. Because the, the, the compensation comes from your ability to help someone else and pull them up. So it's a unity program. It's a reparations program within our own communities. Right? And it's a unity program. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. There's another point I wanted to make here. And I remember when I was uh, when I was growing back in the day, it was a uh, governor. What was that? That governor Wallace, the most racist governor. He was like, he was a staunch anti-segregationist. You know, and you could you a people that that don't want your children to be educated, right? Does everything to keep you out their neighborhoods. Something's wrong. That's a psychological issue there. But you got to ask why. Why is it that you don't want me to get a good education? You don't want my children to get a good education. They don't want us to compete with their children. Not only that, they know the history and you don't know the history. But we'll cover that in, in, in Bible study or when we talk about history. It's not really Bible study. It's 21st century. We're going to look at the Bible, but we're going to peel back the onion, you know what I'm saying, of the deceptions and, and how this was this was put into place. See, that's a that's apartheid of the minds. It encaptures your mind. So we want to we wanna be able to start thinking rationally. We're not rational thinkers right now. It doesn't matter how much money you got, how much materialism you own and stuff. That's that's nothing. That's nothing. Look at Larry Elders and that other chick up there. They got, you know, but then they their mind ain't right. You got people out there that that's, that's very wealthy and very well off, but they have no compassion or understanding about where they come from. Whose shoulders they standing on? Who's who paid the road for them to travel? That's why you can't send one or two. We have to send in mass. And then you'll see things begin to change. See? But you got to get your mind right. And that's what this is about, getting our minds right. Yes, and then we have the Juneteenth and the broken promise of 40 acres and a mule. On a, on a mule. <laughs> right? The long-term financial implications of this reversal is staggering. By some estimates, the value of 40 acres and a mule for those 40,000 freed slaves will be worth $640 billion today. Wow. Wow. The thing is, is they gave people a lot of property. They gave the slaves property, land. You know, with the 40 acres of the mule, they gave them land. And then when the, the, the Union Army pulled out, because they made a deal with the South, you know, the Democrats, you know, they made a, the government made a deal with the South. They betrayed black folks who work, who, who fought in the war and helped them win the war against the South. Then when they were, the land was distributed, when the North pulled out, the Confederates came in and took all that property back. So you gotta be, you have to be in a, you have to be able to lock down wealth. See, and during slavery, a lot of land was was confiscated, taken. 
You know, I know you heard about this recently. This brother, you know, in, in Long Beach, the, the, they just gave him all this property back that they took during the slavery times, and, and they promised they was going to give it back, so they actually gave it back. A lot of that took place across this country. And then you have, when you see the, the uh, article about Larry Elders and so forth, talking about, oh, we need to, they need to, we need to give the white people reparations for taking property from them. They were compensated wrongfully. See, you misdirected. The brothers were misguided and misdirected. And I don't even know how he can look himself in the mirror and sleep at night by the, the stuff that comes out of his mouth. But my issue is this, this whole thing. Are black Americans being prepared and mentally healed and informed enough to benefit from reparations? That's the point. See, we want reparations to heal the years of damage, mental damage, right? That means you have a bucket and it, and it got holes in it. So those reparations are going to go straight to the ground and other people is going to get to go to other people instead of for the purpose that it was intended because our mind's not right. We don't understand economics. All we understand is how to work and consume and spend money. And we think the outward imp imp uh, appearance is sufficient. And while the inside is corrupt and empty and doesn't have a, 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 the ability to understand the economics. We live in a capitalist society. And if they give us the reparations now, that's my position. Now, I'm not against reparations. See? And that's what the, the quiz there, the poll there that, you know, I don't know if it was published or not. It's like we have to be able to manage the resources that we do get. And the fact that we get $1.3 trillion a year away to other communities, that's why they're at the top and we're at the bottom because we're giving them everything. We give them everything. It's like your husband going to work making $100, but he only bringing down $2 because he even spent all the money before he got home. That's why our relationships are poor. How long are you going to be in a relationship when your husband or, or, or come get, make $100, but he only bringing home $2 every, every time he get paid? He get paid a hundred. That ain't gonna work. It's gonna cause a breakdown. They gonna go where the money is. They gonna go to welfare. They are gonna say, "Hey, they gonna everybody that, that that feeds them, they gonna that's where they headed." And we'll we'll address that issue. It's a sore part. It's a sore spot. When you you know, in in our community when it talks to that. So we need to have open forums. We need to open up our churches and so forth. The churches need to adopt this, these programs, see? Because I tell you, once the momentum starts, if you're not interested in the well-being of your community and your members and stuff, then you have to step aside because this is a new day. All that pimping and hustling from the pulpit, it's going to come to an end. We don't want that. you there to be a blessing, not to be a hustler and a pimp. And that you're so important that you can't nurture the skills and talents of the people that come there, the young people. Because you want to be the only important one there. You don't want nobody else to be important but you. That's horrible. That's horrible. So you feed, you feed them this guile in order to keep them subjected with their head bowed, heads bowed and backs bent and subject, subjugation. And you have to not want to be subjugated. You got to get that crap out of your head. You got to you got to be reborn. You have to be renewed. That's what this is all about. Removing the scales from your eyes so you can see. I know the light going to be bright at first. We'll put some sunglasses on until it gets better. But you still got to go through the process. Doesn't make any sense that we 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 still willingly being hoodwinked and bamboozled and enchanted. Then you then you then you go home and you still got the same problems that you started out with. Now this whole thing about therapy. Oh, I want to go through a therapist. The same people that damage your mind. Now you want to go to them for therapy. Have you lost your mind? I know that's why you're going to therapy because you done lost your mind. This is therapy. Because at the end of the day, after you go to that 30, 30 minute session, they tell you to go back, they send you a bill, you still gotta deal with it yourself no matter what. 
So let's have some let's have some therapy here, and we can we build a community so we can create a community where we can help each other to overcome the the traumas that we've experienced before. There's no program like this because they don't have the mindset to do that. I went through all the disciplines and I put it together. Are black Americans being prepared and mentally healed and informed enough to benefit from reparations? That's what we're here today to do. Or will reparations be like the lottery winner who was not only broke in a couple of years because they look out they took out a lump sum payment without the knowledge of wealth management. Some have died and are murdered by others because they were not smart enough to not get caught up in various schemes and manipulation or engage in self-destructive behavior. Plenty of discussion on that one. It's like a person with a serious infection getting a blood transfusion without treating the underlying disease. The infection will only get worse until the patient dies but the blood transfusion company will profit from their misery and underlying condition while the patient believes that they are being treated for the disease. That's what reparations is, man. We have a gaping wound. That's why you want reparations. But this is a hospital. This is what, when you go to church, that's what it's supposed to be. But look at the history of religion. What it has done to humanity, what it does today. And you've given away your power. Take back your power. That's what it's about, taking back your power. Taking back your power. Okay. It's like investing in a business where the owner just imagines success without the proper knowledge and skills to operate the business and give the investor a rate of return. What happens? This is what is meant by putting good money after bad. Like I mentioned before, that's why the athletes don't invest in the community because they didn't try to help their friends before and lost money. It's a bad investment. It's a bad investment. A prudent investor would consider this a poor investment if this person operating the business is not skilled and experienced enough. That's why I say reparations is a, is a trick because it's a bad investment. You're putting good money on a bad investment because we don't know. We don't understand. That's why people have all these projects going on for, for years and nothing ever happens because you don't know the process of creating a profitable project or a business or business model, right? You just imagine in your mind then one day I'm going to make a lot of money. Instead of having the op apparatus in place, but you can have the apparatus in place, but if you don't have the unity in the, of the community, and the biggest problem is that we don't support each other. We just look at each other and keep on going by. Unless it's a feel-good moment and stuff, we don't, even, we don't even take the time. A lot of people are not listening to this. First of all, they see a black man telling them, and then I'm not making them feel good. See? That's why the old school church, that's why the, the, the preachers, you know what I'm saying, changed their pimp game from, from preaching the word of God to making you feel good. So now you're making you feel good. You got 10,000, 30,000 people up in the, in the house because you're making them feel good. Not only is our nation morally bank, uh economically bankrupt, but the people are morally bankrupt, especially within our community. We must first under develop and understand money management and wealth creation or reparations for most black America will not only lead to the worst possible outcome, but many will die because of overindulgent behavior. For far too many black Americans they are children in adult bodies without a sense of personal responsibility, unable to see what a positive outcome looks like. Don't get mad at me. I'm gonna show you what a positive outcome looks like. And the fact that I'm on, I'm not, I'm not in your face. This is the internet. And if I say something that you don't like, you can pause me for a minute, but you're gonna come back, right? 
push through it. I went to school, university, I had a professor in my face, and I still had to perform. You don't have that. You, you, you have a layer of protection, but it doesn't tell, stop you from learning something new. Let me show you what a positive outcome looks like. Go with me. Don't, don't block it in your mind. Open up your mind. That's the meditation period. Again. Open up your mind. Open up your spirit so I can get that heart pumping again. Black people are broken people without knowing how to repair themselves. Not everybody. Some people got good self-esteem, but you still don't know how to come together economically. If you if you a complete person, got it going on, you're the cream of the crop. But you got to take another step. You got to be able to reach back and help somebody else. And I'm going to give you the tools to do it with. And to pay off those student loans and get out of debt and get out of legal trouble. See? So you can see the face of God in your brother and sister. So we can start speaking to each other again instead of seeing each other and just frowning. <laughs> that don't make no sense. Or believe somebody's going to come save you out of the sky or somebody else's sacrifice going to save you. That's ridiculous. That's simply ridiculous. Can't nobody save you. You got to save yourself. But we need to work together in the spirit of unity like the scriptures tell us. That's power. Unity is synergy. One plus one equals three. Remember one time I gave a speech at a church and, he, and I told him, I said, man, synergy, one plus one equals three. Oh, he said the whole month, couple months. No one plus one, tell the church, one plus one, don't equal three. And the church was feeling me, right? He was like trying to be the boss man still. He was like, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the important one here. You know what I'm saying? I don't want nobody else telling my people nothing other than what I'm saying to them. Ridiculous. I said, that's a spiritual formula. See, you're not a real pastor. Doesn't the scriptures tell you where two or more gathered in my name, I am in the midst? That's unity. That's one plus one equals three. That's power. We have to take back our power and get rid of that nonsense. Unity is power. That's why people get married. They should be powerful together. You got a lot of women here, I'm saying, I can do bad all by myself. Well, you married the wrong person. You with the wrong person. We want to heal relationships. We're not looking back to the past. We're looking to the future. We're looking at the way things should be, not the way they are or they were in the past. The reason I'm not married and I'm doing my thing because men used to beat us. Well, you got a lot of women beating men too. But let's put that stuff in the past. We can do better. You have to see better. And all you Christians and so forth, that's what you should be seeing, the better, not the worse. It has to be reflected. Goodness and grace and mercy has to be reflected in your life. Because the same grace and mercy that you show your brother and sister, the same grace and mercy God's going to show you at judgment. And as Jesus, as your advocate, that's the evidence that he needs in order to balance the scales of righteousness in your favor. In addition to whether or not you kept God's commandments or not. So we have to get out of this foolishness, man. We need to wake up. We need to wake up. This is a smack upside your face, man. Let's do better. Black people are broken people without knowing how to Live repair themselves. Has stopped. All right, so my let's take a pause. Hold, hold up for a minute here. The Jitsi, the YouTube. Uh, video stopped so do we want to start again or just let that we, that's that's a good place to start so we'll just stop right there we'll keep going with the um, now I want them both at the same spot so let's see what do you think keep going I only got a little bit more I only got a little bit more to go excuse me All right, let's keep, let's, um,
Facebook is still going. You can do eight hours on Facebook. <laughs> so I think I think the Jitsi there it, it, it stops it. You know what I'm saying? Because of the, the uh, you know I think that stops it. So I only ha I only have a little bit more. You know probably what time? That's an hour. So well we'll make that. We let's let's just stop. We'll just stop it right now. That's an hour. So you guys, um, you know, this, like I said, we're going to spend the whole year doing this. So I don't want to overwhelm you all at, at one time, right? So um, engage in the process, man. Go to the website, powerthroughunity.org. And, and I'm talking to my Facebook family right now. Come on now. You got to be the first ones. And, and you're my family, so I'm coming to you first. Right? You have, you have a, a, an inside look at the possibilities an inside look at the possibilities pass this among yourself share it i see you sharing stuff that just don't make sense all this hocus pocus stuff you know i'm saying you got the wrong idea of what god is in your life see you have to take action and this is an action ministry this is about action and you can't be lazy. You have to work for your own, towards your own liberation. And that's what this is about. This is a 21st century ministry in personal growth and professional development. All right? So peace. Um, come on now. I'm, I'm not asking you to jump off a building. I'm not asking you to get blood. I'm not asking you to march and burn down no building. I'm just asking you to spend some time on yourself. And I know that's, and, and I'm responding to what I know you want, what I've been told over the years. So don't wait until, yeah, people that wait until they're in trouble, then they call me. And then it costs a lot of money. I'm giving to you this to you. I'm pretty much paying you to invest in yourself. That's what this is. It's a two-way transaction. And all you got to do is spend some time. And this is better than any ministry. A ministry that pays. A ministry that pays. Not a one-way transaction. It's, 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 you know, fair exchange is not robbery. I'm not robbing you. I'm blessing you. I'm giving you more than what you ever got before this time frame. We're going to look at the Bible. We look at the scriptures. This Bible is a critical thinking device. It's not for you to look at it and say, this is the, everything in here is true. And it's the, 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 the word of God. It's the word of man. It may be inspired by God, but Satan is the prince of this world. Some of us are inspired by him too. And look at the people who put it together. The Old Testament, where they got that wisdom from as a guide for us to live by and how they took some history and they, Mixed it up and so forth. We're going to clarify all that. But you got to be willing to get this nonsense out of your head. And not be offended because I'm telling you that it's nonsense. God gave you power. He didn't give a preacher the power. He didn't give that religious or institution the power. He gave you the power. And when you were born, you didn't come out with a Bible in your hand. You've been hoodwinked and bamboozled. And if you're a good person, is a good spirit and stuff like that, I'm just I want to encourage you. I'm not really talking to you. Because you need to take the teachings to be able to take it to another level so you can be a, a blessing to others, not just a blessing to yourself. What does the scripture say? To whom much is given, much is required. So don't get offended because I may say something that you don't like, so you cut off everything else. That's childish. The scripture also talks to that. When as a when you're a child, you think as a child, you act as a child. But once you become a man, you have to put away childish things. Talking to the women too. We have to we have to do better. In order to be better, we have to do better. We live in communities where we're 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 drive-by shootings, killing our kids, and men parading down the street, stringing a song, 
saying what it says, put down the violence, save a life. God's weak. We have to build an economic infrastructure. We have to come together, get out of these houses, come together to the churches that's there. If the churches don't participate, then transform them. They're 501c3s. Get like-minded people up in there. We must do better. Be your own leader. I'm going to give you the information to lead. Teach your children what's right. Sit in the school prepared to learn. Not with an empty backpack. That's why the weekly meetings are so important so you can empower your children to be successful when I'm helping you and walking with you. All right. Peace, love, and we're going to do it Wednesday. Wednesday, Bible study, right? We're going to continue to, we're going to continue the message. We're going to look at some scriptures and stuff. And if you have uh, questions, you can, you can post it on the chat room. Uh, you can email me, uh, Claude Sinclair Ministries at gmail.com, and I'll, I will address the, uh, the issue at, uh, during the broadcast. All right? Peace, love, prosperity. May God be with you and keep you, and faith without works is dead, and it leads to death. All right, peace. Be more and thrive.